and then sort of what we believe about the Bible, uh, what we believe about God. Uh, you know, we, on Sundays we believe certain things about God, and then on Mondays or Wednesdays or Fridays we might go to our, our counseling appointment somewhere and we might hear something totally different. Maybe not. Maybe we have a biblical counselor, someone that lines up with the Word of God, but, but we also might succumb to uh, counseling techniques or methods that would fly in the face of the gospel sometimes. And so where is it that uh, our hurt intersects with God as a healer? And we all have hurts. That's number one. Don't fool yourself. If you're hurting, uh, so is the person next to you. And the reason that you hurt is because you live on planet Earth. I hurt. You hurt. Everybody hurts. What do these hurts look like? It may be that you came from a broken home. You know, uh, you didn't have a mom and dad that loved you or both a mom and dad that loved you, or maybe one was abusive. Uh, you might suffer right now from illness, and that brings a whole lot of hurt, a whole lot of pain in your life. A uh, broken heart, maybe you love someone that doesn't love you back or didn't love you back. Job loss, you lost your job, and that's a big part of your life, big part of your, your income, your stability, your security at home, and that is no more. Loneliness. Something like 90% of Christians in a recent survey admit to loneliness. Death of a loved one. They're not coming back anytime soon. You'll see them someday, but they're not here, and that hurts. Imprisonment. Physical abuse. That includes sexual abuse, emotional abuse, poverty, drug abuse, absent father, absent mother, and man. The list goes on, doesn't it? This is the real world hitting us in the face. Hurt. Everybody in here hurts for one reason or another. Now, what in the world does the Bible have to do with our hurts? The Bible is just what I believe to go somewhere later. What does it have to do with my hurts? Well, we're going to talk about that. These sort of experiences, these hurts, they sometimes result in an intense feeling or a constant feeling of guilt. Now, guilt is over the stuff that we've done. And then shame. What is shame? It's something we put not on what we've done, but we put on ourselves as a label, as an identity. We're ashamed. We're the sum total of our past, we might believe. Fear, fear can take all kinds of faces, can it? I mean, fear of what's going to happen tomorrow. And also, look at what almost happened in the past, and then we project into the future, and you've got a little movie screen on your mind, right? And so sometimes you might sit idle, watching the movie, watching the movie only to get fearful about what could happen, what might happen, what may happen, but what hasn't happened. And so we play the movie. And of course, you know, I'm likable, everybody likes me, and then I hit planet Earth and I find out, wait, that's not quite true. <laughs> and I get rejected and scarred by that, and it affects how I relate to people. So then I start thinking, well, maybe time heals all wounds. You've heard this, it's a popular saying, maybe time heals all wounds, but if you've lived long enough, you've already figured out that time can actually make wounds worse. They deepen. Uh, we get entrenched in certain thought patterns and ways of feeling. And time doesn't heal all wounds. That certainly can't be the answer. Well, maybe positive thinking will just make it all go away. You know, if we just talk ourselves into something different, then it'll all just vanish. Well, first of all, at the outset of this, I want to say you are not weird. Doesn't that feel good? <laughs> You're not weird. We all feel stuff. But I'll tell you, when I start feeling stuff that's, uh, oh, it's embarrassing, or it might be labeled as negative, or it doesn't line up with the Bible, it doesn't line up with what I heard on Sunday, and so now I'm feeling all this stuff, and so then what do I try to do? I naturally try to get rid of the feelings. And this is subtly maybe what church and religion has taught us to do. That we stuff down the feelings, we hide the feelings. The church folk, they can't see the feelings, okay? Because nobody else is dealing with this. Nobody else struggles with feelings like this. This is weird. 
Well, you're not weird. In fact, why does the Bible tell us be anxious for nothing? Well, because the Bible knows we're going to be anxious. Why does the Bible give us solutions to worry and fear and anxiety? Because God well knows, in being the creator, that we struggle with fear and anxiety and worry. So what's the answer? To just sit around and try not to do those things? Or stuff those feelings down and don't talk about them? And maybe a magic wand will appear, waved over us, and they'll go away? How in the world does the Bible intersect with the crazy thoughts and crazy feelings and pain that I experience? Well, let's also say emotions aren't good or bad. They aren't right or wrong. They're just indicators. Now get this, they're indicators of the thoughts that fill our minds. Okay? So when I look at what I'm feeling, I, my, my job is not to judge the feeling. Oh, I shouldn't be. I better not be. Oh, this feeling is wrong. This feeling is bad. And see, maybe you've heard that. Maybe you've heard, I shouldn't be angry. Well, the Bible doesn't say that. It says, be angry and sin not in your anger. Don't act on the feeling, but it's okay to have the feeling. I mean, imagine trying to stop yourself from having feelings. God created our feelings. And so they need to be expressed and they need to be talked about. They're simply indicators of the thoughts that fill our minds. We sit in a movie. We're freaked out. Our hands grip the armrests, right? We start shaking. Sometimes I'll find myself, I jump out of my seat a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> and only with cartoons. <laughs> but we get in that mode, right? The movie is feeding our thoughts. The thoughts are feeding our feelings. And then we make a choice based on our feelings. Thoughts, they precede feelings. So go ahead, let yourself feel. Talk to God about these things. What does scripture say? Cast your cares on him. Cast your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Let every request be made known to him. Talk to him. Pray without ceasing. That doesn't mean oh my goodness, i got to sit there and pray without ceasing for hours. It means throughout your life, talk to dad. Throughout your life, talk to dad. Don't cease talking to dad. God is not shocked at what we feel. God is not shocked at what we experience emotionally. You know, I know someone, they say, uh, I've been feeling a lot of doubt feelings lately. You know, I feel, and then I, and then I start getting anxious about the doubt feelings. So then I'm anxious about doubting, and then I start to doubt further. Maybe I'm not even a Christian, because real Christians, I mean, they never doubt. <laughs> really? The whole business of Christianity is invisible. We believe in an invisible God. We believe in the invisible Jesus Christ, His Spirit who lives in us. You better believe there's going to be times of doubt where we wrestle with things and come to a deeper understanding of what we believe. Real Christians struggle, period. The flesh is capable of anything. Do you have the flesh in your life? Do you have the power of sin warring against you? It's capable of anything. Don't be shocked at what you might feel. Don't be shocked at what you've done. So go ahead, let yourself feel. Talk to God about those feelings. But here's the clincher, and this is where we're headed today. If you're hoping for the healing of your emotions, don't stuff them down or try to fix them. Instead, look to the source, which is your thought life. What does God tell us? He says, be transformed by the renewing of your minds. Now, notice he doesn't say, be transformed by the renewing of your feelings. Be transformed when you finally stop feeling this stuff that is so unusual he doesn't say that. He says, be transformed by the renewing of your thinking. And we all know we've got unrenewed thinking. We need new thoughts. So our feelings follow our thoughts. So what do we need? New feelings? No. We need new thoughts. Well, you might ask him then, what is your truth in this situation that will set me free? What is your truth? Your truth in this situation that will set me free. Not just the truth. The truth might be they don't like you. They just don't like you. <laughs> that might be the truth. 
But what is God's truth in this situation? Don't look to them. Don't look to them. Look to me. Not to them, but to me. So now I want to present a, a model, very complicated. There it is. Input goes into the mind, and as a result, there is some kind of output. All right, now this, is, this model is used in computer uh, classes of all kinds. What you put in the computer, what you program in there, is what is going to come out on the other end. Now, what I'm saying is you put error in to the computer, and then guess what you're going to get on the output side with regard to feelings? All kinds of feelings that are based on what? On the junk that I'm pouring into my mind. About myself, about my God, about what he thinks about me, what he feels about me, what he's done for me, or maybe he hasn't done for me. Oh, he's done it for them, but he hasn't done it for me. Lies of the enemy are the input, and the feelings naturally respond. This is the way we were created by God. Thoughts precede feelings. Feelings flow from thoughts. So now, what if you could replace error with truth? Well, then you might find that if I focus on truth, that the output then changes. You see? Not rocket science here. But isn't it amazing how this will trip us up time after time after time in our lives? We find ourselves feeling, oh, I had all these expectations. Uh, I'm a newlywed. I've been married three years, five years, seven years, 12 years, and I thought they were the answer to my problems. I thought they were going to make me happy. And then it turns out, ah, they're just the creation, not the creator. Disappointment sets in. The feelings set in. Then I look at the feelings. Ah, oh, I don't, the, where's the magic? The magic is gone. Oh, I just don't. I don't feel in love anymore. Or I don't feel like I love them anymore. And so then based on what? On the output, on the feelings, we start making decisions. But what if we could go back to the thoughts? Not the feelings, but the thoughts. And start looking into what is the truth about this person that I've been looking to? Who are they? Are they my answer? Are they going to be able to supply all my needs? Or have I had unrealistic expectations? So let's look at a few beliefs and compare them with the Word of God. Belief number one, everybody should like me. You ever tried that one on? Everybody should like me. I'm jovial. I'm chipper. I'm the life of the party. I'm positive. I'm happy-go-lucky. Why wouldn't they like me? I'm sweet. And then you find that it's a week or a month or a year into a relationship or a friendship and you discover, you know, this really isn't a friendship. They're talking about me behind my back and stuff. They don't even really like me. They're just putting on the smile. So someone doesn't like me and then I had this expectation and then it's like a bombshell dropped in my lap here. What in the world just hit me? This stinks. This is not life as I thought it would be. Or the opposite. You run around thinking, nobody likes me. Nobody likes me. You know what? They're talking about me all the time. Nobody likes me. I'm unlovable. I'm unlikable. I'm, I don't have any value. I don't have any... Mom and dad didn't even pay attention to me. Why would anybody else? And then someone starts liking me, and I can't... Oh, they're just... They don't, they don't mean it. They're just faking. Inability to receive love. Belief. My life will always be great. This works till about maybe 20. <laughs> My life will always be great. Now, the Bible tells us that in this world you'll have trouble. That's what the Bible tells us. It says, don't be surprised when this fiery ordeal comes upon you. Uh, they hated me, Jesus said, so they will hate you. Ouch. See, truth when it impacts belief, there's a feeling. We've had an expectation. Maybe we feel despair. My spouse makes me happy. She, you know, for the man, it's, uh, 
Yeah, she's going to be, you know what she's going to be? She's going to be my greatest cheerleader. She's always going to support me. She's always going to love me. She's always going to like everything that I do. And I'm a bottomless pit for respect, and she's just going to fill me up. How's that working for you guys? <laughs> she's just going to, you know, you know the, the words, uh, she completes me. See, I'm empty and she fills me. I'm half and she comes in with the other half. And that's how we talk about our spouses, my better half, my other half. You've heard this. So, see, I'm a half. I'm not whole. I'm not a whole person. God didn't create me as a whole person in him. I need the other half and then I'm complete. See, so then I spend the rest of my life saying, well, now, where is that other half again? Because I'm still feeling incomplete. If you, could just, if you could just complete me, then everything would be great. Not you, you. And then, of course, you know, you've got the wife, and she's thinking, oh, I just met the greatest man in the world. And he, you know, most men, they're busy working, and they're into their jobs, and their, their sports, and their friends. But not this guy. This guy is going to give me all of his attention, all of his time. He's going to think of the little things. You know, the little things. He's going to be... <laughs> He's going to be all about the little things that spell love to me. And he's not going to mess up in that area. And so then we, we think, well, you know, he's going to... I, I'm a bottomless pit for love and attention and time. And he, he is going to come and fill me up. You see that? We're looking to the creation, not the creator. And then there's disillusionment, isn't there? What in the world? Did I marry the wrong person? Because I could have sworn that these other folks, they've got a whole lot more resources to feed each other and fill each other and complete each other. All the other marriages at church, they look really healthy and good. Yeah, well, I know better. <laughs> I know that we don't have the resources to fill each other up. We all know it deep down. The question is, when are we going to confront it? My children are perfect. <laughs> My children are perfect, right? That's what we think. And then, I don't know whether it's two when they exercise their will for the first time, or 13 when they really exercise their will, but we figure out, My children are human. Not perfect, human. And then there's disappointment. Maybe it's my fault. I could have done better. I should have, would have, could have. Then we play the movie from the past. And if only we could go back and change, then maybe they. And it's our fault and the guilt and the shame. And you see, we're feeding the mind with all kinds of thoughts based on they would have been, they could have been perfect. God's word is saying, no, children, obey your parents. Why does it say that? Because we know you're going to disobey them. So here's our best advice, obey them. Real Christians never struggle. That's an interesting belief. So then you start struggling. You know, the flesh is capable of anything. And then you get to oh, those other folks at church. They just never seem to struggle. So I guess I'm not a real Christian. I guess I've, maybe I committed the unpardonable. Maybe I'm out of the will of God. You know, everybody else, they're getting their prayers answered. There's like, boom, miracles happening in their life. Their testimonies and miracles. And then me, I mean, I, I can barely get through a day without the thoughts taking over. Real Christians never struggle. Well, the truth is, from Scripture, even the Apostle Paul found himself saying, I'm doing the very thing I don't want to do. I wish I wasn't doing it, doing the very thing I don't want to do. Who's going to deliver me from this? I feel like I'm in this religious system that's telling me do not, and then all I do is do, and then comes the guilt and the shame, and, you know, where's the answer? Real Christians never struggle? <laughs> Imagine that belief system dominating you. The flesh is capable of anything. I can make life work. Well, the Bible says, apart from him, I can do nothing. So which of these is true? See, some of us, we've experienced a, for a time a capable flesh, uh, a qualified flesh, 
uh, an adequate flesh. We feel capable, qualified, adequate. We're perfectionist. We're organized. We think we're going to control. You know, we've got a few needs, right? Food, water, air, and control. And we think, I can, I can make all these happen. And so the other three are supplied, and then we work hard to get that fourth, control. I can make life work. And then we discover, when life hits us, you know what? Things aren't working out the way I thought. Apart from him, maybe I can do nothing. And disappointment sets in. So what's the answer? Well, we've touched on it. The Bible says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, not your emotions. So what if I could go back and hit all of these belief systems with truth and replace error with truth? Well, then my unrealistic expectations would drop to the ground and I'd be living and in, in walking in truth. Not surprised a bit that I struggle. Not surprised in the least that my emotions feel like a roller coaster, feel wacko. My emotions, my performance has been all over the place. Welcome to planet Earth. But he lives in. But he lives in. And he knew and he saw and he even designed you to feel. And he still lives in, the counselor. Error is what keeps us from emotional healing. You see that? Not Fixing the emotions, not tweaking them, not putting a band-aid on the emotions. But error is what keeps us from emotional healing. So consider asking the great counselor. Just in your own mind, with your own struggles, your emo own emotional turmoil. Will you consider asking him, what error am I setting my mind on that brings me such guilt, such fear... Such pain? What, what are the belief systems that I bought into to where when life hits me, I don't expect it, I'm shocked by it, I can't believe it, I, maybe I'm even turning to God and I'm saying, why did you let this happen? I thought your promises, your promises said, and we've got unrealistic expectations. God didn't promise us smooth sailing. In this world, you'll have trouble. But he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. So where is the counsel going to come from? From he who is in you with truth to your mind about your unrealistic expectations. What is your truth that will set me free in this situation? We're back to the model. Truth goes into the mind and as a result, feelings. God's truth is what sets us free. I want to stop here and I just want to, I want to pray for each of us right now. Why don't we bow our heads and we'll pray together. Father, I pray for each person here. Uh, we are human and we go through so much. There might be somebody here going through divorce, going through loss of a child, loss of a relative, depression, Emotions that we can't seem to explain or fix. We wonder where the help is. Father, I, I pray that we might see all of this talk that we do at Ecclesia, all of this talk about identity. I pray that we might see our identity is in you, not in getting people to like us. Our completeness is in you not in someone else being alongside us. That the source of healing is you, not trying to stuff down our emotions or put a Band-Aid on them. Father, I want to pray for each person here that we might be reminded that you are our counselor, that you live in us, that it's not that we believe in the Bible on Sunday and then we go adopt other philosophies. That you're the answer. That you're the answer to every problem we face. Show us, Father, the thoughts, the thoughts that have been leading the feelings, the thoughts that have been influencing the outcome.
in our emotions. Show us those thoughts, Father, and great counselor, we ask that you might replace those errors with truth. In Jesus' name, amen.